Um, I'm very excited to, to be here to talk to you because I think that there is a element going on in organizations today that is really going to make a significant amount of change. And I think you all are people that do consulting with companies like I have worked with and have done internal consulting with. And I want to share with you how you can use data because I think data is going to be the next phase of where we are today from an organizational change and an OD point of view. And I think that the days of being able to tell the story from uh, qualitative perspectives are over. And people who are going to be really successful in this field going forward are going to be people who have the ability to analyze what's going on in an organization, uncover the uncoverable, be able to tell that story, and help organizations focus levers within that organization to drive effective change. And I particularly think that the economic environment that we're in today makes it even more important because we are not any longer going to be in companies where they're going to be paying massive and spending massive amounts of money on executive development, on coaching, etc. They are going to want to see, tell me quantitatively what has changed and how are you and how are we building the capacity of leaders within our organizations. So I don't know how many of you, you know, how many of you have heard of the term talent management 10 years ago? Two people. How many heard of it five years ago? How many hear of it all over the place today? Right? Talent management is one of those things that has, has taken on a life of its own and I am particularly amazed about that, to be honest with you, because I think that managing talent and developing leaders is a core competency of anybody who is in a uh, organizational or human resource capacity within any company. But I am continually shocked at how many people don't do these kinds of things. But so let me walk you through an evolution of, of some of this just to give you the history of it. Um, I know that I only heard the term myself about five years ago, and uh, this has been something that GE has been doing for 25 or 30 years and never used that phraseology. phraseology. So the 80s and 90s, you know, people talked a lot about succession planning. You know, are people ready to move into jobs? It's been my experience that most of those succession plans, just like strategic plans, sat on the shelf and were rarely used in organizations to fill jobs because people left and companies scrambled immediately to get a body into a seat to continue on. They really weren't very strategic. Uh, promotions, who are we going to promote? You know, who's a good person? Who does really well? Usually the feedback and the analysis of what makes this person a really great person was weak. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many of you ramble around organizations, but if you do that for a while, you say, you know, why'd you promote Pete? Good guy, you know, always delivers. Well, that's very actionable feedback, right? Good guy, always delivers. I'm really clear what I need to do to get to my next job from that kind of feedback. Um, you know, what's our pipeline? What are the gaps? Paper-based, not really used. Today, it's a much more integrated kind of situation. Um, people are talking about CEOs are worried about what's the health of some CEOs. Let me put it that way are worried about what's the health of my organization, what's my capability, do I really have the leaders today that are going to take me to uh, take my company to help take my company to that next level, five years, eight years, ten years out. And this is a real issue, I think, for corporations today, the whole question of sustainability. And we are seeing it play out quite um, dramatically in front of our eyes. Now, General Electric Company has been around since the late 1800s, and it's been on the New York Stock Exchange since that time. My guess is it plans to stay there. And the reason it's planning to stay there is because it's one of the very few companies that has focused so much on its long-term capability and sustainability of its organizational models. Quality. What's the quality of my leadership? Do I really have the leaders that can drive high performance? Now, most companies will not talk about constructive uh, cultures, but they will talk about high performance. And if you look at how they define high performance, it's very 
closely aligned to a constructive leadership style, and the reason is is because it comes right from the literature, and uh, that's why it's there. Data, again, people in the C-suite listen to data. And I was intrigued by what Rob had to say because there are some organizations that will continue to dig because they are vertical thinkers. And so they use the data to obfuscate and to not take action. And they continue to dig and continue to dig. There are other organizations, however, that understand that data can be really a way to directionally point you to what you need to do to drive change and drive effective improvement within your organization. It's kind of that positivist versus negativist view where you're looking at where do I want to be and where does my company need to be down the road and what's the data telling me against where I am today so that I can use the data to drive a talent playbook. And I think that's missing in many, many organizations that I work with and I interact with tons of top companies around the world is that talent playbook and really understanding what are the gaps in my organization? Where is it that I'm lacking? Not from a negative point of view, but from where I need to be three to five years out and then what do I do to close those gaps? Track that from a baseline perspective and drive action against it. So today it really is a key area of focus and I'm amazed as I go around to organizations how um, immature on a maturity scale this practice is in companies. And I really think that the tools from Human Synergistics can help people get much crisper and more focused. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and how you can use them. Where I think it's going to be in the future, and I think it is going to be much more of a central component of any organization's organizational aspects, human resource aspects. And I think that it's going to be part of the business strategy. So anybody that cannot understand the business strategy and align their talent initiatives, their people initiatives, their organizational initiatives to that business strategy are going to be left in the dust, so to speak. So the important part here, which I don't see yet in organizations, but I think it's coming, it's unquestionably coming, is that there will be organization plans, there will be people plans as clear as specific as there is a financial plan in any business today. Nobody would acquire a company without going through their books, right? Right? Nobody would. They understand the financials, they understand the EBITDA, they understand the market valuation, etc.